ಪುಣ್ಯ ಫಲಮೋ ನೀ ಅಂಡ ಚೇರೋ ವಿಡನಾಡಕು ಎನ್ನಡು ಬಂಧಮು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ dearless lord how fortunate we are for we have found you and you have found us never never allow us to break this beautiful bond let us all the time be in you and you in us offering our most loving pranams at the lotus feet of our ever present swami and invoking his presence and his benediction this beautiful evening most revered elders dear brothers and sisters sairam to all of you even as i stand over here hundreds of memories come back to my mind of what those beautiful days were when bhagwan used to just walk out and i remember we used to be seated exactly where we are all sitting now and we used to look at those few aunties who were sitting over there and even as their hands would go up in namaskar even our hands would go up in namaskar we didn't see bhagwan but we would simply go in namaskar because they were able to see swami through their eyes we used to have swami's darshan and even as swami used to just appear that beautiful orange flame just appearing a hundred hearts simply leapt in joy i remember one day when i was doing thrai duty it was the afternoon time and there are those beautiful marigold flowers on the side of thrai and it used to so happen that a lot of monkeys used to be around i don't know whether they are still there but a lot of monkeys were there inside and you know they used to come and eat up these marigold flowers and if you go and chase them they will pluck out the entire plant and they'll run away so one of our jobs was to see that that does not happen so it was one fine afternoon and i noticed this monkey had come and it was having its afternoon dessert i think one marigold flower for his dessert and with the least possible sound and maximum impact i went with a stick tried to chase it away hoop, hoop. and guess what i hear hey i hear a sound and that is a very familiar voice it is the voice of bhagwan from his bedroom he is looking at me and he is chasing me away i am chasing the monkey away but swami is chasing me away saying hey don't disturb them from the bedroom so i said okay swami i went back and about 3:30 in the afternoon when swami came out he came walked up to me and said those plants are meant for them only those flowers are meant for them all of them to eat and obviously i was shown who was the master around there and what my job was so that was one beautiful moment and several several such beautiful moments here in vrindavan let me start with my first experience that i remember of bhagwan it was beautiful days of the golden sands of puttaparthi of prashant nilayam those beautiful chitravati sands which used to adorn the darshan hall in the 1980s i was about 4 or 5 years old and i considered myself to be an extremely disciplined boy the reason being that back in my samiti in bahrain children were not allowed to sit for bhajans the weekly bhajans children were not allowed to sit because they would be you know crying and making a, a lot of noise but one child alone was allowed to sit in bhajans and that was me because i never made sound i didn't make any noise i was a very disciplined child and people used to come and pat me on the back and even at that age of about 5 or 6 i had that ego that i was a very disciplined child 
and so here i was for our weekly uh, our yearly darshan of bhagwan and you know all of us we want that one single thing what do we want in prashant nilayam the first time when we come to prashant nilayam what do we want no not swami's pad namaskar or swami's that the first thing we want is token number 1 isn't it that is the most coveted thing because that is what is going to give us the passport or the visa to then get whatever we would get so here was me and my father both of us crying and praying every day for the token number 1 but for about 8 days every day we used to get only double digit tokens 10 12 19 21 those were the numbers that we were getting on the 8th day in the morning lo and behold <laughs> my father put his hand into the pouch into through which we used to pick out and there came token number 1 wow heart leapt up in joy ran in and picked up a vantage position you know vantage position in prashant nilayam is where swami just cannot miss you you know swami has to come over there that's what we think so we took up one such vantage position and sat over there and i was sitting in the first row and then th- the trouble started or so i thought one of our dear uncles wearing the blue scarf who is in charge of our spiritual progress the sevadal even i have been a sevadal he comes up to me and says sairam not here sairam the sairam is such a beautiful word you know in fact we don't need language at all the sairam would have been one word which conveys all the emotions known to mankind right from sairam to sairam sairam you know you can convey every emotion that you want through this one word called sairam so even as he gave me one of those turner sairams i look back and said sairam i gave him one of those my better sairams and of course that was not going to melt his heart he simply looked at me and said sairam children were not allowed to sit in the first row because what used to happen is you know children used to just get up and walk up to bhagwan as he is giving darshan which is a very not a very nice thing to do and so i was sternly asked to move to the second row and i started unnecessarily arguing with that uncle i said no no uncle i am not going to walk i am not going to do anything i'll simply sit over here and wait for bhagwan to come and you know take his pad namaskar obviously that uncle was not understanding any other language other than the language of heart at that moment and so he said sairam sairam who's you know whose son is this whose child is this and so i looked up at my father thinking that you know my father will rescue me and my father suddenly disowned me at that moment who is this child i don't know who is this is <laughs> obviously you know because his first place was going to go and i was shocked i said what is this dad <laughs> you know you have just given me up like that obviously you know for token number 1 we are ready to give up anything and so i was unceremoniously taken from that place and deposited in the last the farthest arch uh, possible in the prashant nilayam mandir i was deposited over there along with all the other children and this was a major major shock to me i couldn't digest it how could me how could i the most disciplined child you know be treated this way and so i started bowling and it didn't stop over there i started shouting i started saying this is not real swami because this swami is not listening to me this is not real swami and then i went on to say these are not real sevadals also i don't know what is the meaning of that even to this day but i simply started shouting this is not real swami and this is not real sevadals and guess what happened my father and me were ceremoniously thrown out out of the darshan grounds and soon we held the first line but not inside the darshan hall outside the darshan hall obviously my father also and me both of us were thrown out of the darshan hall for all my tantrums and we had the beautiful darshan of bhagwan from outside the darshan hall and you know when bhagwan walks bhagwan does not walk swami glides you know for us when we walk we have this movement but if you see bhagwan when he walks 
he's almost like on roller blades you know he's just flowing through and because the long robes of bhagwan if you notice you know he'll cover his feet you cannot even see his feet so you don't know what is happening below actually he just starts gliding over and those beautiful footprints which are left on the sands we used to pick up that and we used to take it back home you know for you know these are the footprints and often times it used to so happen that swami would call some devotees for interview and suddenly at the end of darshan we wouldn't know which is swami's footprint and which is the devotee's footprint but we would simply collect some footprint and come back home thinking those were swami's footprints you know in fact that is the ultimate reality that swami wants us to recognize there is no difference between i and you anyway so we had swami's darshan and it used to so happen that in those days swami used to come out at about 7:15 and take devotees for interview and then he will invariably come for a second round of darshan so the considerate first timers will give way to the devotees they will all go for breakfast and other set of devotees will come and sit in the front wait probably expect whether swami will come or not so my father said that let us forego breakfast today let us go and sit as front as we can after the darshan gets over and we will pray and i was simply tearing i couldn't control my tears because how could my swami do this to me i this is what i wanted this is i had been praying for this all along and how could this happen to me and so after the darshan got over we went and we took our places i was sitting in the second row and just kept crying and i was broadcasting the innermost prayers of my heart swami how could you do this to me swami how could you do this to me it was about 7:45 in the morning and the interview room door opened and swami came out and simply looked in my direction and from there he walked absolutely straight to me ram rod straight he walks up to me and i am getting sh- goosebumps all over myself because my swami was walking towards me and by then i had somehow found myself in the first row swami walks up straight to me and says hey why are you shouting i was shouting at about 6:15 in the morning swami had heard my shouts at about 7:45 in the morning one and a half hour delay but no problem my lord had listened to my prayers he walked up to me said why are you shouting i was absolutely dumbstruck because my swami was standing right in front of me and then said hey take pad namaskar and simply walked away completing the the darshan that day dear brothers and sisters i realized that my swami listens to my prayers and responds to my prayers he walked into my life once in three swami was telling all the boys boys you have only two options either you allow me to enter into your life or i will break open your heart and enter into your life but enter i will because that is your destiny very beautiful allow me to enter into your life or i will break open and enter into your life you choose what you want to i had allowed swami to enter into my life ever since i was born my parents were devotees and they had told me only one thing this is god and so i had simply believed i had simply had faith yeah this is this has to be god because my parents say that he is god but that day i realized that this god is not just a god but he is also my hero he is also my best friend that is how he entered into my life and ever since it's been an amazing love story Adi Shankaracharya says that there are three prerequisites necessary to achieve self-realization: manushyatvam, mumukshyatvam, mahapurusha samshraya. The first and foremost is to have the birth of a human being. Very, very rare. Jantu naam narajanma durlabham. Very, very rare to get the birth of a human being. congratulations to each and every one of you all of us are human beings first set of congratulations congrats second prerequisite so one prerequisite we automatically have gained 
by simply becoming a human being, we have gained one prerequisite to self-realization, the ultimate. Second prerequisite, mumukshatvam, intense desire or passion for mergence or realization. The very fact that all of us are seated over here and we have been drawn to Swami shows that we also have that intensity of mergence or realizing who we are and who Bhagwan is. So a second set of congratulations to all of you for you also have Mumukshatvam. But the third and probably the most important is Mahapurusha Samshrayaha. That is the all protecting the ever guardian hand of a master, of a Mahapurusha. Guess what? A third time congratulations to all of you, all of us, because we even have that. We have the ever protecting hand of our Mahapurusha. And he's not just any Purusha, not just Mahapurusha, he's the Yuga Purusha, our dear Lord. And so a third time congratulations, we have fulfilled all the prerequisites for self-realization. So just to allow Bhagwan to walk into our life is the only prerequisite necessary to gain the ultimate. And that we have already done. And I'm sure that each and every one of us seated over here in this beautiful Sairamesh Hall have one such miracle to tell of how Swami walked into our lives. So this is called Chamatkar, right? Sab log Chamatkar ko namaskar karte hai. Yes. All of us salute such beautiful and wondrous miracles. But Swami says that there are four cars. There are four cars necessary to realize Him. So let's talk about what are these four cars. The first we have already seen is Chamatkar. The first car is Chamatkar. What is the second car? Does it end by just Swami walking into our lives by a beautiful cancer cancelled or some wondrous vibhuti appearing from a photograph or a garland dangling or a flower falling? Does it end with that? No, that is the only the first step, chamatkar. The second Swami says is samskar. When the Lord walks into our life, our life transforms forever, as Brother Nadesh put it. We don't remain the same again. But here, we have a role to play. Swami says, take one step towards me and Swami will take a hundred steps. That is what happens at the Chamatkar. In fact, Swami says, Chamatkar is like my visiting card. A miracle that I do for you is like my visiting card. And oftentimes we would have realized that, or we see it, a person does not keep giving visiting cards to everybody, isn't it? You don't keep introducing yourself. Every time you, you see a person, do you... Hello, I am Ame Deshpande, etc., etc. You don't introduce yourself. You probably do it only once. Similarly, the Lord will have that chamatkar, that life-transforming miracle, probably only once in our life. That is the visiting card that He is giving. After that, it becomes our duty to build that relationship with Him. How do we do that? Is through samskar. And here I am, I am reminded of some beautiful experiences. It was 1993. And Swami had sent a few boys. In fact, that is when the Grama Seva had really started. It just was there for one year. When Swami had sent a few boys for Grama Seva, He had sent them to Janakampalli, a nearby village, and He had told them to serve and come back. And after the boys came back, Swami asked the boys, Ha, Yelauna, how was the Seva, Seva? So they said, Swami, very nice. And Swami said, Okay, so did you meet Radhamma? Who's Radhamma? Nobody knew who's Radhamma. So they just blinked at Bhagavan. Are that house which is there on the right hand side, you know, when you Swami started describing the exact location of Radhamma Garu in Janakampalli. And they were still not, they were dumbfounded, they didn't know which is this Radhamma Bhagavan was talking about. And then Swami went on to say, Are that lady who gave you that ragi mudda ball with, you know, hot ragi mudda ball with ghee on top of it. Ah, yes, 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 Swami, yes, Swami. They all suddenly realized that, yes, there was a lady who had given them this prasadam. And so they said, yes, Swami. And Swami said, you know, that is Radhamma. These boys had gone for seva, but Swami was introducing one of the residents of that village to these boys. And then Swami went on to say, Radhamma is the world's 
best midwife. Midwife is a, a person, a lady who helps during pregnancy in the villages. Swami said, Radhamma is the world's best midwife. Swami had declared her, had authenticated her as the world's best. So all the boys nodded because whatever Bhagwan says has to be the truth. Then Swami said, do you know why she is the world's best? No, Swami, we don't know why she is the world's best. Then Swami said, you know, there are hundreds and hundreds of pediatricians and gynecologists in the world. Yes, Swami. Still, Radhamma is better than all of them. Oh, okay, Swami. Do you know there are several researchers in this area who are publishing several papers? Swami is telling this. Yet, Radhamma is better than all of them. So much of importance to Radhamma. So if all the boys again nodded. Yes, Swami. Do you know why she is the best in the world? No, Swami. And then Swami said, because before she does any activity, before she goes on to help in any delivery, she simply closes her eyes and says, Swami, you only work through me. And once she prays that, I simply take over and because I am God, I have to be the best. And therefore she becomes the best. That is why Radha Magaru is the world's best midwife. And each one of us can become the world's best in whatever we are doing, surely by closing our eyes and telling Bhagwan, Swami, you are doing this through me. Swami takes over and once Swami takes over, it has to be the best because the Lord doesn't know what is less than the best. That is how he works through us. That is the kind of qualities, the samskaras that he puts into our heart. It was again one of those years, of course, as Brother Natesh was telling, Swami is only known to give, give and give. So it was one of those years when Swami was distributing a few toilet toiletries to all the boys in Purnachandra. And in fact, Swami distributes all sorts of things. That day, Swami was giving all the boys some toiletries, some shampoo, some aftershave, some shaving kits and all sorts of things. And so as all the boys were seated in line, they were all assorted kind of things. So someone was getting toothpaste, someone was getting a very posh perfume. So you know, the moment this, something like this happens, what do we do? Hey, what did you get? Then you know, the person who has got, uh, the person who has got uh, 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 probably a very nice perfume will say, I got a perfume. And somebody will say, I got only toothpaste, yeah. <laughs> and so this was happening and all the boys were, you know, kind of finding out, they were matching and mixing what the other person has got. And obviously Bhagwan was just going through all the lines which were seated over there. And Swami finished and obviously we were, everybody was oblivious to what was happening, that Bhagwan was actually walking through the lines. Swami finished Darshan and he walked up to the stage in Purnachandra and he simply stood there while everybody was comparing with each other what they had got. And Swami kept seeing and then suddenly all the boys realized that Bhagwan was standing on the stage over there. And so there was a hush and everybody started looking at Bhagwan. And then Swami said, Ha! Andariki Vachinda has everybody got? Yes, Swami, everybody shouted. And then Swami said, Now tell me, who wants me? All of you have got gifts. Now tell me, who wants me? In our lives, this is the kind of predicament that each one of us face. All the time we are comparing with the other what we have got versus what somebody else has got. Somebody is comparing jobs. Somebody is comparing status. Somebody is comparing families. Somebody is comparing incomes to the extent that we even compare our spiritual progress. Oh, he is more spiritually progressed than I am. Little realizing that each and everything that has been given to us is in fact Bhagwan's gift to us. And that is exactly what we require at that moment is what Bhagwan is giving to us. Little realizing that we spend our entire lives in comparing what we each one has got. And all the time Bhagwan is standing over here on the stage and simply looking at us, waiting for that moment when we will look back at, at Bhagwan and Swami will tell, 
now who wants me he is waiting for each one of us to invite him into our hearts when are we going to do that that is the lesson that bhagwan has taught each one of us that is the kind of samskaras that the lord puts into us the third is a is my own experience of how bhagwan put the samskara into me a particular one i have shared this often but i would like to because i was reminded after i heard the allahu akbar bhajan it was in my second year post graduation in my mba that bhagwan gave me a lot of chances swami used to look at me and say next bhajan you sing and when swami starts to give some importance obviously you know our it is like a pumping session where our head keeps growing bigger and bigger and our heart keeps shrinking and we think you know i am the next bhajan i am the next best bhajan singer you know i am swami's boy etc etc and swami wants to prick that and so it so happened that this experience happened with me it was uh, one of those days in bhajan hall and if you notice we have a beautiful footrest of bhagwan and the indication for arati will be when swami pushes the footrest in, inside and arati will be taken and that could happen any time typically we used to have about 7 to 8 bhajans between 5 and 5:30 about 5:25 swami will take arati one day i was singing the seventh bhajan i was going to sing the seventh bhajan and after the sixth bhajan swami took arati the next day i was singing the sixth bhajan and after the fifth bhajan swami took arati the following day i was singing the fifth bhajan and after the fourth bhajan swami took arati now when such a thing happens we have one of our coordinators our senior sirs in our bhajan group he has got long tentacles which have got very you know unrestricted coverage with bhagwan he is able to catch all these signals and obviously i knew that he is going to say something to me i tried to avoid myself i did not want to make eye contact with him our bhajan group in charge i simply tried to whisk away i knew that there was something wrong and even that sir also he looked at me and i looked at him and we just shared a few uh, looks and i just ran away from bhajan hall couple of days later <clears throat> i was slotted to sing the first bhajan and now i wondered swami how are you going to miss my bhajan today you have been missing my bhajan for the past four occasions i forgive you for that but today you just cannot miss my bhajan if you say bhajan i have to be singing i am the first singer ganesh bhajan i have to start or so i thought that day the bhajans were not inside bhajan hall they were outside bhajan hall so all of us were seated outside and bhagwan came and uh, he asked out of all the days that day for not one not two not three but six speakers to speak in front of swami in front of him six speakers spoke before the bhajans and so all of us and i was particularly very curious i kept looking at the clock and i was thinking probably today there will not be any bhajan and if there is no bhajan there is no problem because it's not my fault six speakers spoke and probably the last speaker will get the brunt because after his speech swami has taken arati so i was seated over there and i was keenly looking at the clock and after six speakers it was about one and a half hours that bhagwan had spent outside in kulvant hall dear brothers and sisters the most amazing miracle happened bhajans happened but guess what happened during bhajans even as the six sixth speech got over Swami asked for bhajans and then looked at the set of primary school students who had come and said today you will sing bhajans <laughs> oh my god the primary school children led the bhajans that day swami sat for half an hour listening to their bhajans of course it was a moment for them to cherish in fact and it was a moment for me to introspect Swami had given me the slip thinking I thought I am going to be the first singer of the day Swami had a way to even bypass that 
obviously after that sir walked up to me and said brother take rest <laughs> take stock of the position of your position what is happening why is swami doing this and so for the next 15 days i used to sit at the back of the bhajan group and i used to follow bhajans and every day i used to cry swami what have i done what should i do swami please forgive me and these were the kind of prayers inside in fact to drive home the point so deep into me one day swami even asked the vedam people to chant sing bhajans he did not allow i'm sure some of the brothers over here will be remembering that swami made the vedam people to sing bhajans they were atrociously beautiful bhajans atrocious for so called music connoisseurs but beautiful for bhagwan swami simply enjoyed the bhajans that day to drive home the point deep within he was doing this i felt at that moment several people around kulvant hall were getting their chances only to drive home the point into my mind and it was about 20 days since this event happened and one day sir looked at me and said okay why don't you sing today it was my so called day of redemption i was singing the third bhajan swami came out he was sitting in kulvant hall that day swami called four speakers to speak the whole session went on for about an hour and hour 15 minutes and i kept looking at the watch and I, at the end of the fourth speaker swami said rendu bhajan padandi i said swami what is your problem all you need to do is lift up this one more finger i am the third singer please this will be like the end of my bhajan career if today you get up before my bhajan i don't know when again will i sing in front of you swami please don't do this to me and of course then the third finger never went up the two bhajans continued and it was about a month later this about 20 25 days later and swami was sitting outside and the signal for aarti was when swami would stretch out his hand to hold the brass railing and would you know get up and that would be the sign the sign for the aarti to be taken and even as the third second bhajan was getting over and i had never prayed probably the first time i prayed was when i was seated as a little boy you know bhagwan how could you do this to me and the next time was i was very very strongly broadcasting my prayer swami please swami please swami please and as i was crying out like this to bhagwan second bhajan gets over swami stretches out his arm his right arm to hold the brass railing and even as the pujari sir lights the aarti with the left hand swami says let us have one more bhajan ink kokati bhajan ink kokka bhajan swami said and that day i sang this very same bhajan allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar you know what is the meaning of allahu akbar allah you are great and that day i meant every word of what i was saying swami you are great allah you are great and bhagwan stood for the entire bhajan okay and with the beautiful the gestures that only the lord can do this beautiful waving of the arms okay stood for my entire bhajan and after the bhajan he looked at the pujari and said now let us have aarti that was the day when he told me that for the sake of teaching us a lesson swami can even take a pain upon himself it was a time when bhagwan was suffering was having a little bit of pain in his fractured hip in spite of that swami had stood for the entire bhajan just to let me know that he had heard my prayers and the lesson that i was supposed to learn better not have ego otherwise he goes when you have ego he goes that is how swami puts the samskaras into our heart but it does not even end over here there are several such examples of how swami through very very minute words through one gesture one smile he will convey to us the ultimate and he will leave a lasting impact in our hearts but this has to get translated into action and that is the third kar that we are talking about first is chamatkar second is samskar the third is paropakar 
This has to get translated into action, into something that will benefit the entire mankind, the entire community, the society in which we exist. And here I am going to narrate this experience that happened during Gram Seva. The Gram Seva, as we know it, began in 2001, 2000. I joined in 2003. And for the first few years, I enjoyed doing Gram Seva. But even as I became a little senior, and I started taking over, started doing a bit of organizing work, I started feeling that this Gram Seva was not adding any value to me. Because what would happen is we would go for Gram Seva, and my job would be to see, to walk up to a house, and then ask, Yantamandi Unnaru, how many people are there? And in a little hut, the lady will say, Padaidu Mandi Unnaru. There are 15 people in that hut. And my first reaction will be, Appaddam Cheppadamma, don't tell lies. I am supposed to be seeing Narayana in that lady, but I will tell my Narayana, don't speak lies. And then I will do an investigating work. I will walk into the house. I will see how many people can actually say. I will come out and decide my own estimate that only seven people can stay in this house. And this is what used to happen. And then my Narayana will shout at me, scream at me. I will shout back. I used to fight back. And at the end of the day, I used to be left frustrated. And even as I sit in Kulvanthal at the end of the one of, of the days of Gram Seva, I used to feel frustrated. I used to think, Swami, what is this happening? I am supposed to be go going and serving. And here I am coming back frustrated. It is a lose-lose situation because the villagers that I have served are not happy because I have fought with them. I am not happy because they have not got what they wanted and I have thought that, you know, they have cheated. And this kept happening for an entire, gram, the 10 days of Gram Seva. I was thoroughly frustrated to a point that I was even disgusted. And I said, I don't want to do this Gram Seva. And so the next year, I took a slip from Gram Seva. The convocation drama was around. And so I told our sir that I'm going to be busy in, in convocation drama and that I don't want to participate. I won't be able to participate in the Gram Seva. And so I was given off. Actually, the main reason was I was just not enjoying Gram Seva. And during that, those 10 days, I used to talk to a few students who used to come back from Gram Seva. How was your day? And they used to say, oh, brother, fantastic it was. And I used to wonder, what is it that that brother is able to experience and I am not able to experience? That brother is telling me that his day was fantastic. I was not able to feel anything fantastic about my Gram Seva. What was going wrong? And so the next year, I decided, Swami, come what may, I am going to try and experience what those brothers are able to experience. And so I decided that I wanted to be a part of the Gram Seva the next year. But I said, I don't want to go to the village we have something called a stock vehicle. The stock vehicle does not actually go to the village. It is planted on the main road and its job is to replenish the stock in the various vehicles that go towards the villages. And so we really don't have to serve. We will merely serve the people who are serving, the students who are serving. And at the end of the Gram Seva day, whatever extra stock is left will be come and put back into into the uh, stock vehicle. And as we return back to Puttaparthi, we will distribute all the extra food packets to all the people on the way. So that was our job. So I was in the stock vehicle. We were coming back somewhere near Kotticheru. We stopped and we were distributing all these packets. And suddenly, you know, I find somebody pulling my pant. It was an old beggar, so to say. An old, very, very ragged person was pulling my pant. And obviously, you know, the first thing is, no dhoti, no sari, no, go, go, go. Because that is what, you know, we thought, that is that what they wanted. And so he said, no, 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 I don't want, I don't want sari dhoti. Naku adi vaddu. Then I said, yem kawali, what do you want? You have got prasadam kada? Have you got prasadam? Yes, I have got prasadam. Then what do you want? He says, he just wants to speak to me. <clears throat> speak to me. About what? So I got down from the vehicle. And he took me to a side. And then he says, I don't want sari or dhoti. He held my hand and said, I just want to tell you that I am a beggar who begs every single day of the year to get his daily bread. 
But during these 10 days of Gram Seva, I don't have to beg because I know that my Swami is sending food for me. I don't have to stretch out my hands in front of anybody else. My Lord is stretching out His hands and coming all the way to my doorstep to give me prasadam. And when I see that smile on your face and when you say, Swami Pampincharu, this prasadam for you, me kosam, this prasadam has been sent, you give me that pride, you give me that dignity of life. And for allowing me to keep my head held high for these 10 days, I am deeply grateful to you and to Bhagwan. That is what Gram Seva does to us. That is what Gram Seva did to me. I was able to see an entire metamorphosis happening in the way I was looking at all these individuals. For them, it was Swami stretching out His hand and giving them a hope, a reason to live. It is not just a packet of food, but it is the grace of the Lord with hope inside, giving dignity and respect to every single individual. That is what is Paropakar. I am reminded of several such beautiful experiences of how Swami has shown how to do that service. We all know the story of that buffalo when Bhagwan used to go to Horsley Hills, which is close to Puttaparthi. On one occasion, when Swami had gone to Horsley Hills, there was a buffalo that used to pick up the hot water. The particular guest house is on top of a hill. And every day, a buffalo used to pick up hot water from down the hill and take it up to the hill for all the guests and Bhagwan who were staying in that guest house. Swami had spent a few days there and at the end of his stay over there, as everybody got into the bus, into the car to leave, and Bhagwan also had just got into the car, suddenly Swami said, Oh no, I have forgotten one thing. Swami got down, ran behind and went up and there was one devotee who followed Bhagwan to see what he was doing. Swami went up to the buffalo and said, you have done fantastic seva and he was patting that buffalo. Imagine what that buffalo, what a day for that buffalo. Swami used to call us, Swami calls us Dunaputa. Let us be that kind of a buffalo which can serve Bhagwan and then get a pat on our backs. Swami showed his gratitude even to that buffalo and it, it seems it did not end over there. Swami got a photograph of him standing with the buffalo and the owner clicked. So much so that next year when he went to Horsley Hills, he actually gave that photograph to the owner saying, this is what we clicked last year. That is how Swami remembered the services of that insignificant, so-called insignificant buffalo. That is how we have to serve and that is how we have to pay gratitude. I'm reminded of another experience, an uh, incident which happened. It was after the Anantapur water project when all the devotees from Anantapur had come to show their gratitude to Bhagwan, And when they all said, Swami, thank you so much for doing such mammoth task of giving us water. Swami's reply was, thank, thanks to you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve you. Somebody asked Bhagwan, Swami, you are doing such a fantastic job of giving water, health and education free of cost. Swami said, I am not doing anything great. These things are supposed to be given free of cost. I am doing what is supposed to be done. That is how service has to be done. Why is Swami able to do that? Is because for Him, there is nothing different from Him. There is nothing which is separate from Him. The entire world exists in Him. He exists in the entire world. He is able to find oneness with everything. And then Swami is telling us the ultimate that even I am you and you are me and can we also do this? We also can expand our horizons. We also can expand our heart to assimilate and include everybody into our life. That is when our true Paropkar will happen. And in fact, that kind of a Paropkar will lead us to the fourth car which is called Sakshatkar. 
which is realizing realization so we went through this beautiful four stage process of chamatkar samskar parupakar and finally sakshatkar i am reminded of one experience that i have had <clears throat> it was in the year 2007 and often times all of us you, we sit with letters to be given to bhagwan i used to give only one letter to bhagwan in the whole year and that was on my birthday because that is the only occasion where i can legitimately walk up to bhagwan swami will bless me and then he will take the letter i am sure each one of us have experienced that and so i was also sitting on my on my birthday with a letter and swami did not take my letter which was a very common thing also and generally what i used to do is if swami does not take my letter that day i will simply tear it and throw it off because i know that the contents of the letter have already reached bhagwan because whatever is there in the letter swami already knows there is no need to give a letter and if swami wouldn't take so be it so that day i was I had come back to hostel and i was about to i was changing and i was about to you know get rid of this letter when somebody said that sainath sir was giving a parayanam was telling us stories about bhagwan just like we are now hearing and so i ran for that parayanam session and sainath sir out of all the days on that day was talking about a very interesting episode that happened see how bhagwan organizes this entire thing he was talking about a very interesting debate that all the students had many many years ago the debate was whether we should write letters to swami or not one set of boys were saying there is no need to write letters to bhagwan because swami knows everything and the other party was saying we should write letters to bhagwan okay because that is our chance to go close to him so this was a debate that happened and obviously there was no direct conclusion to this debate all the boys slept that evening next day morning swami was inside the interview room swami sent word for sainath sir sainath sir entered into the interview room and he noticed that there was a big pile of letters on swami's left hand side swami was picking a letter and throwing it into the dustbin picking up another letter throwing it into the dustbin and then picking up yet another letter opening it up and it was happening in a very random fashion so this was a shocking experience for sainath sir he says he was looking at this entire thing exercise and saying what is this in his mind what is this happening swami is simply throwing away letters without even reading them all those devotees with so much of joy they have written letters to him and he is simply throwing them and even as this thought was crossing his mind swami looked at sainath sir and said what are you thinking okay he said no swami nothing and then swami said you are thinking why i am doing this and swami said come here and you know you know bhagwan's very unpredictable sometimes he will call and he'll hit you <laughs> so he said no swami i'm very comfortable where i am standing so no no swami said come here come here and pick up one letter from here from this pile so he went picked up a letter swami said open it and read it at the back of the room go and read it to yourself and so he opened the letter and it was a letter from a bengali gentleman who had was telling swami that he had come 6 months back and he had a problem one of his child was not well and he had prayed to bhagwan and had received bhagwan's prasadam and that prasadam had cured that child and this was a letter of gratitude to bhagwan was the content of the letter and as he finished the letter he looked at bhagwan and swami looked at him and says kya bolta hai that bengali gentleman kya bolta hai that he came here 6 months back and his child was not well and swami gave him prasadam and now his child is very well and so he is very happy and so he is thanking bhagwan swami read out the entire contents of that letter obviously the omniscient lord knows everything this is where suddenly sainath sir re- recollected the previous nights uh, discussion and he said swami then is it necessary to write a letter to you you anyway know everything is there any necessity necessity to write a letter to you and then swami said a very beautiful thing swami said see remember it is in response to your prayers that i came i took up this form i came down on earth 
is in response to your prayers. Each one of us have prayed for God knows how many janmas that the Lord comes down in physical form. And now that Swami has come in physical form, we suddenly say, He is omniscient, He is omnipresent, He is omnipotent. Isn't it funny? The same Lord, when He was not in physical form, we could have thought, isn't it, that He is omnipresent, He is omniscient. When the, when the Lord takes a form and comes, suddenly we discover His omnipresence, His omniscience and His omnipotence and says, there is no need to write a letter to Bhagwan because Bhagwan knows everything. Swami said, you jolly well should write a letter to me because it is in your answer to your prayers I have come. Now it is your duty to take that effort to come up to me because your redemption lies in being close to me. I have taken that hundred steps towards you. You have to take that one step towards me and that is of writing a letter because in the process of writing a letter, we are actually achieving Trikarna Shuddhi. When we are writing our feelings to Bhagwan. We are thinking of Bhagwan, we are speaking out those words and we are writing. At that moment there is unity and purity in our thought, word and deed and therefore we must write a letter to Bhagwan. This was what I heard on that evening. I said, yes, I am not going to tear that letter. I am going to sit with that letter because this is my opportunity to come close to Bhagwan. Of course, it was another kind of tapas because it was four months before I finally gave that letter to Bhagwan. Every day I used to sit with that letter. So much so that finally that whole piece of paper got completely, um, you know, was soiled in my sweat of my palms. All the ink was, had melted away, had dissolved and I had to write two new letters. And it was on March 13th, 2008 when Swami was sitting in Bhajan Hall and Swami simply called. I went and gave that letter to him. I had nothing much to write in the letter. I used to write this beautiful prayer that I had heard from my senior. Swami, you be the thinker of my thoughts. You be the doer of my deeds. You be the speaker of my words. So this is the prayer I used to write. And then this is something that Bhagwan had told. Always pray, I am you and you are me. So this is the last line of my letter. Swami, I am you and you are me. And even as Bhagwan was reading that entire letter, he came up to that line and then showed me those two lines and he underlined with, that, with his finger, he said, I am you and you are me. This feeling, develop it in your heart. Iti bhadram ga penchkondi, Swami said. Keep this as the mission statement for your life. That, the day I realize, the day we realize that there is in fact no difference between us and him, that I am he and he is me, that is the day of Sakshatkar. In fact, dear brothers and sisters, it is so ironic that when Swami stands and speaks and thunders and says, I am God, all of us thunder back saying, yes, Swami, we know and we all clap. And then when Swami says, now I am telling you, your God is telling you that you are God, there is pin drop silence. And we look back at Swami and say, Swami, how can that be? How can we be God? It is our same very Lord which is telling us, who is telling us, I am you and you are me. Why are we not able to develop that? Swami once, only he can play with these words, Swami said, you pretend to be God, you will tend to be God, you will end being God. You pretend to be God, you will tend to be God, you will end up being God. That is our destiny. That is our ultimate stage. We have to do it. We can do it. We must do it. We should do it. That is the gratitude that we can show to Bhagwan. For that very reason, the Lord comes down on earth to take us through these four stages of Chamatkar, Samskar, Paropakar and ultimately Sakshatkar. So with that prayer in our hearts and in our minds that there is nothing which can stop us from realizing that He is in us, He is within us, outside of us. In fact, He is the one that pervades the entire cosmos and in fact He is us.
and that we are Him. I take this opportunity to thank Bhagwan for giving me these precious moments to think about Him and to immerse myself in Him. <laughs>